what's what's the next song? So earlier this week, I saw some world class pettiness, and you guys know that petty is my favorite color. I I, I love it. I live for it. It's it's part of my makeup. Um, after the president has <laughs> shut up, Phil. So after the president had been giving Hispanic people the business all over the place, and then unfortunately we had this shooting in El Paso, the country of Uruguay sent out a notice to all of its traveling uh, citizens saying they need to be very careful going to the United States because it's a very dangerous place that doesn't like <laughs> Hispanic people. Mm. Come to f- be followed by the country of Venezuela telling folks leaving Venezuela. We everybody knows how dangerous Venezuela is. Venezuela's like, yeah, uh, all of our Venezuelans are hot out here. <laughs> go into the United States. Be careful because it's a dangerous and lawless place. <laughs> That's wild, man. And only, oh, can, yeah. and the only thing I can think of is the ambassador of Venezuela like doing the Nancy Pelosi clap for some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that was some petty ass shit, but I loved every, crazy, every crazy. Dude, I loved every second of it, man. Perfect. Man, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's yes. up? What's up? What is up? Back once again. It is the incredible in the black podcast. And just in case you weren't aware, this is a podcast dedicated to covering the current events and social issues going on in your black world and covering it all from the perspective of three grown ass black men who know it ain't no such things as halfway crooks. I am your host, Big O, Mr. In the Black himself, but I'm never alone. Let me introduce the rest of the Thundercats. Hustle, say what's up. Yo, what's up, man? Obviously, I'm Panthro. If the Thundercats, you know that. Nah, the one black dude, nah, you're not going to be him. You're going to be uh, Snarf. Crush, say what's up. <laughs> what's good, everybody? Yes, indeed. And joining us tonight is Jake Cleveland Payne, host of This Is The Conversation. Brother Payne, what is up? Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me, guys. Back to, I know you had all those big time names going on, so we had to look down all the time. What's up, man? Guys, Hollywood and New York and do all this stuff, so... Um, <laughs> So thanks for finding some time for me. Quick <laughs> 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 yeah. shout out to my friend Candace, who was probably listening right now. Like I told you guys, I was just talking about Judge. Uh, and I was just like, yeah, I know those guys. So it's was like, hey, you guys are all over the place. Yes, indeed. And we appreciate Candace. We appreciate you for being on the show. And uh, you, you never small time with us. You always big time. You always big time. We'll, we'll see how that goes by the time this, this show is over. <laughs> another another year to get on the show. It's like another couple of things before I get back here. <laughs> we are on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and all the other major podcast streaming services. Make sure you check us out at In the Black PDCST on Facebook, Twitter, and on IG. Or you can check us out at our website the new and improved www.intheblackpodcast.com. And if you like what you're hearing, we'd like for you to consider contributing to our show by going to www.patreon.com forward slash ITB podcast so we can continue to bring you the content you've come to know and love. Now we're going to jump into our black box letter for tonight. This week's black box letter comes from Orlando. Orlando writes, I don't know if he's from Florida or not, but his name is Orlando, so. Keep your jokes to yourself. What's going on, fellas? Been a fan of the show for a bit, but this is my first time writing in. I hope that you read this letter because I really want to get your thoughts as married men about polygamy. I have a friend of mine that just came out to me about how he and his wife are thinking about welcoming a second partner into their family. He and his wife are having were having issues having children, so they looked for a surrogate. They have a healthy and happy four-year-old now. They kept in touch with this woman during the period and became very close. He said that his wife was the one that brought it up, though. Jokingly, she said, wouldn't it be cool if, quote unquote, Sarah, I'm assuming that's not her real name, but Sarah could be our wife. And he jokingly responded, yes, but he didn't know that his wife was serious. Well, after a long talk, they seemed to be on the same page that Sarah would be a good addition to their growing family. They broached the idea with Sarah who is on board and it looks as though she's in the process of moving in with him now. I asked him what the deal was. 
why did he think that it was necessary to make her a wife instead of just having her as a good friend or just keeping her as a surrogate period and he said that he and his wife had fallen in love with the woman and uh that she felt that she was a, it was a good idea or that they all felt that it was a good idea so i'm asking you because it all sounds crazy to me what do you guys think who wants to go first on this man i mean I think we should let the guests go first. Man. Please, bro, please. <laughs> Frank is trying as hard as possible to avoid all of the calamity that may come with having, uh, we're talking about polygamy on this show. But yes, Cleveland, go ahead and start it off. <laughs> all right, so, well, I guess I'm kicking it off then. Um, that's what you get to complain about not being on the show more. Yes, indeed. That's what you get. <laughs> so, so, so at first, the first thought is, why are they not just being swinger type folks and just bringing her into that stuff why are they or why are they really having a whole nother wife thing i don't understand the concept of i don't understand the concept period of polygamy or the other way around where you're just sharing folks and swapping folks and living together i can't I can barely get get along with my one wife as it is. <laughs> okay. um, Hold on. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not bringing in other wives so they can complain about what I got going on. And gang up on me. <laughs> Hold on. Let's let we'll just make sure that we're clear so that our our listeners know as well. Polygamy is the practice of having more than one wife or husband. Uh, poly polygyny is a man being married to multiple women and polyandry is a woman being married to multiple men so there are variations of the the polygamous lifestyle but go ahead uh yes there's very there's variations but it's just it's, i don't understand i guess the concept i guess it's just a matter of the times that we are now in a big full circle of the whole gathering of you know the village and the family and people trying to just get together it just doesn't make sense politically it doesn't make sense um um uh, uh, uh financially to do something like this 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 because you got you got one person with the man or the woman sporting all these folks it obviously doesn't necessarily make sense in a family way if all these women are having all these babies and a lot of cases when these things happen like you watch sister wives that's that's the case where these things happen out in the middle of utah where nobody's nobody's looking for it but they all know it's there right and they right. just kind of get they kind of get away with it and for the most part it's 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 like insurance scams and um and social security scams and stuff like that mm. i i don't understand I, and hope and so let me get this straight this is the guy is asking what's he think about his boy who came out in the relationship <laughs> he, he's not thinking about getting to himself right listen that's the way the letter was presented to us but i'm going to take rick's normal stance and disbelieve our listener who took his heartfelt time <laughs> to write this letter i'm thinking this is this guy's situation and it's not really his boy but that's just me but given that yes that is exactly how he's described it rick i want to hear what you say because when i presented it to you you seem like grumpy old man get off my lawn you weren't very open-minded, and I want people to know that you're not open-minded. So go ahead. No, I'm, I'm not open-minded. Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, uh, um, Orlando either could be putting his boy on blast, or just like uh, you said, it could be his his situation. He just wants to see what other people think. Right. The, the first thing I have to say is everybody has to handle their own stuff. Meaning that I can sit here in judgment of it, it's been going on for thousands of years. As long as there's been people, there's been polyandry and polygandry and polyscamony and all that stuff. It's been happening, right? God, I'm such a hater. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of it. I would never want that. Cleveland, you you expressed it perfectly. I always tell my wife if we uh, if if our marriage ends, you know, there's calamity. Our marriage ends. I'm never getting married again because. She's the That's mother. the safe and smart thing to say to your wife. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if you said anything other than no. that, we'd be having issues. But it's, but it's the truth, though, because um, at, at, you invest so much in a marriage. You find someone that you love and that you build with. And if that ended, I'd want to focus on being a father. And I wouldn't want to, just, this is just me personally, I wouldn't want to be back in that relationship. So for me, a marriage is about finding one person and then working at. Because marriage is work, man. 
And okay, yeah, my know, question wait, to you, wait, 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 my wait, question wait, to you wait, is: wait. what you're saying is that it seems as though you're saying anyway that having more than one spouse is a lack of work. No, I think that, that no. would be double the work, right? That that's my point. Is that in it, it, what wasn't described to us is the situation with the child. They have a four-year-old child. Right. How is this going to be introduced to the child? How is the child supposed to refer to this third person who's in the house? What if there are more children? You know, they mentioned the surrogate. I don't know if a child was produced from that or not, but what if there are more children? Like, there's so many questions that are there um, that I don't want to put my judgment on, but I also think in my life it wouldn't work. My wife and I have been blessed with three sons. And the idea of bringing in another woman who, just like Cleveland said, would be criticizing everything and bring her own her own mix into everything. Right, right. That's a nightmare. That's a, like a lot of guys. It sounds like a nightmare. Yeah. They, they fantasize about like having a threesome. They don't fantasize ha about having a second wife. That's the difference. They just want an experience, but they don't want to have because marriage is work. You have to support someone, care for someone. You have to compromise. So the, it's interesting that they said that they both fell in love with her. I find that kind of interesting. I like to know more about that. Right. But I, I, it, to me, it sounds like a nightmare situation. I don't want anything to do with. It. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Phil. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I'm inclined to agree with, her, with, her, with, her, with everyone else, of course. Um, this isn't a situation that you know I could ever you know get into myself, of course. But it does seem like a like a surprising byproduct of the, you know, the cultural shifts that are going on and certain attitudes toward relationships and marriage itself. I think this is definitely a reflection of what, of how, of how this generation feels about marriage and, and the institution of it and how flexible they want it to be. I mean, for me, you know, I am more than content. I'm focusing on my singular Haitian wife. Um, <laughs> as opposed to plural Haitian, uh, brother, two Safety. Haitian women. I mean, Safety. No, no, no. That sounds like a revolution. Yes. No, that, that, that sounds like a receding hairline, there, buddy. Back pain. You know what I'm saying, um, but you know, the uh, I just don't see how the practicality of it doesn't uh, doesn't present itself to me. I mean, you may say there's a financial aspect that this may balance itself out, but. You know, there's certain cultural aspects of it that you know that, that doesn't seem sustainable. Hmm. You know, um, interesting. But, but but then again, maybe I'm not aware of the other changes going on in the culture that would otherwise make, make this acceptable in their local community. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Uh, part, part of this thing, I, I think, uh, and I'm not, um, I'm unashamed to say that I have, I come from a culture that respects and has fostered polygamy and i say polygamy specifically uh, the the practice of more than one wife i'm nigerian right. both of my parents they're in their 60s both of my parents are children from polygamous households and i've seen the effect that it's had on both of them and they've both the effects have been very different for my father and for my mother um I think the whole thing is very interesting because I have a I had a coworker uh, that passed away last year, but I had a coworker that who's also came from a polygamous household, um, and he told me he said the only reason why he w didn't have more than one wife now is because American society doesn't allow for it. And I said, how could you? I said the same thing that Rick said to him at the time. I said, how could you say that? You know, dealing with more than one woman at the same time, that's dealing with my wife sometimes makes me want to pull the, the hair off the root of my head right and he said that's because you're not a, a man if you were a real man you'd be able to handle more than one woman <laughs> so, and i went and i talked to my i talked to my dad that's and hilarious. i just you know conversing with my father and i was asking him man. about you know their household situations and i don't know necessarily if being a man is the necessary descriptive that you'd put to it, but you have to be built specifically to be able to handle a polygamous household. My grandfather, I never got a chance to meet him. My dad's dad, my paternal grandfather had four wives and a total of 20 some odd kids. My mother's father that also passed away, I didn't get a chance to meet him either had three wives and 
they all seem to manage and do what they needed to do. And I think culturally from one aspect that used to happen because part of the economic backbone of your society, of the culture was agriculture. So what was the best way to get things done? You put a lot of bodies on the field to make sure stuff gets gets sown, fields get sown, <laughs> gets pulled, all those things, right? So that's one aspect of it. But I'll give you one other thing. Uh, I was listening to NPR and I double checked the article, not the article, but the segment uh, before we came on, on air. And back in 2008, during the uh, economic crash, right? In Philadelphia, where there is a high population of Muslims, right? This was a growing thing in the community. And they had a couple that was on there that the husband had lost his job. The wife was the only one working and she was only able to sustain part-time work. But they had a young lady that had been coming in and out of their home that had known their children, gotten to know them. And I guess through some aspects, they became very, very close as well. During this process or during this period, the wife, the original wife got sick with cancer and she wasn't able to work. So what happened, this young lady came on board and helped to take care of both this man who was trying to find work, their little kids, I think they had two little children at the time, and this young lady or the, the wife that had cancer. As the woman started to get healthier though, she posed to her husband about growing the family and not necessarily growing the family like our writers or like our uh, the, the writer of our letters uh, situation where they fell in love with the woman, but they thought it made the best economical sense at the time that three, three avenues of income into the household would be the best thing. So if two people are outside working and they have one person in the home uh, homeschooling or raising the children, Like, like Rick said before, and like I think what all of you have said at this point, it's not our life. But for me, if it works for them, or if they can figure out a way for it to make sense, then let it make sense. See, see my the thing, problem is it's it's illegal. Number one, it is well, it's, out, you it, it's illegal to, it. to formally marry yeah. another person. So, but if you have someone living in your house and you just happen to call them my wife my other wife i don't think that there's any laws against that you're not claiming them on the on the taxes though are you that's the, i think that's another well well, mm. well well are you if you're if you got three sources mm. of income coming to the house i mean i got me my wife and my mother-in-law but i'm not claiming my mother-in-law she just happens to live in the house right i don't have someone actually putting forth money into the whole entire pot and making it work and calling them my other wife that's a whole nother thing that's just beyond doubt. I understand exactly what you're saying about the agriculture stuff because all these places where people are living this, so they're living out in the middle of nowhere in farming towns and stuff like that where it's going on and people are, are just ignoring it or just letting it go. But to be in the middle of the city and to live a life like that and to know your kids are have to have to explain this. It's not enough explaining, you know, having two mommies or two daddies having two mommies and a daddy, how's that going to make any sense on the playground? Mm. Yeah, and my thing is, I think the one thing that we're forgetting being, you know, five men here, excuse me, four men here, is that this is all male chauvinist driven. Because... No, no we did this, explain it, it polygamy, poly, it, and polyandry. And, and tell me again, with your parents, how many of them were from uh, one woman who had multiple husbands? That wasn't just because that exists in my culture doesn't mean it doesn't exist, which it sure. does formally exist in sure. a ton of different so, places. Listen, listen, and I used to be skinny, right? Like that, it, that did exist. I have pictures, but the reality is that's gone, bro. Like that, that's gone. That was a different time. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Somewhere on the planet, there is a woman who has multiple husbands. Uh huh. But in a million more places on the planet, there are men who has mul have multiple wives because most societies are male chauvinist driven, where men have a hierarchy where they're placed above women. 
And that's true for your culture, that's true for my culture, that's true all over the world. So I think that what we're forgetting, when we talk about this, when we talk about economic terms and things like this, is that the standard is one man, multiple women. So you're right about the agriculture, but the reality, and you're right about the, when it came to the economics in regards to the couple, but they could have brought the woman in as a roommate, if that's the situation. Exactly. Like exactly. There's, there's, people do that all the time. They have co-ops, they have all kinds of situations. My, my thing, that, the thing I think that I least want us to address is the fact that this is based on male chauvinism. I, I don't know necessarily if that's the case. And the reason why I say that is that if you take it from a perspective of my parents' upbringing, yeah. I can I can understand that. The economical part, given the agricultural-based society and given the history of, Af well, on the surface, it's patriarchal, but there, that's a whole other argument. But in today's society, people are much more flexible. And I think uh, Phil referred uh, deferred to it a second ago. People are much more flexible with how they give their love and their attention to people. It's not a, it's, it's not uncommon to find millennials at the very least that say that they're more open about monogamy, that they're not going to be tied down or that they don't feel the necessity to be tied down to one person for the rest of their life. See, it might the be the only way to move out of their parents' house. Men. Okay, but being a swinger and being polygamous are two. No, I'm not. I know the difference and I understand so what you're saying. One of the I posted this on my page before we got on the air and one of the first people that, that reached out to me was a young lady that's I don't want to say she's in that type of situation. Wait, no. is she seasoned? Huh? Is she seasoned? She's, she's not seasoned, no. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. But she's... <laughs> Good Lord. I thought you only she... talked to seasoned women, man. Typically. <laughs> Dude, don't you trying to get me in trouble? Man, shut the... You an old babe. Man. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, shut up, man. Damn. You know my wife is going to listen to this damn thing. Lowry's. <laughs> <laughs> Man, like I was saying, man, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the young lady, she's open-minded and into that type of stuff, and she's, right, right. she's she's down for the game. So, I mean, it's a lot more women than you think, man, especially but when, you, like I said, this is a society now that they're not thinking like you, Rick. No, you're damn near 60 years old. Ain't nobody thinking about the way you're thinking. Yeah, First of all, these young cats can't they live on their own anymore. Yeah, Thank you. Know. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the way out their parents' house. <laughs> 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 Man, we're going to get a letter and it's going to be your fault. Shut up. <laughs> but man, look, no, man, I, I think that the point is being this. And I want to really stress this point. I guess I'm the only guy who's stressed. That you're a hater. And I, you look, I look behind. I, always, I look behind the letter. <laughs> Orlando, listen yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. Orlando, this is about men's desire to have multiple women. In the end, that's what it's about. Did you not hear him say that the dude said his wife is the one that brought it up? Yeah, okay, right. And she was joking, and Orlando took it seriously. Orlando, I, I'm reading behind. I, I'm on, man. man. I'm reading behind yeah. the letter, dog. Don't Rick just be pissing off all don't, the writers and listeners, oh, man. Oh, Jesus man. Christ. You know, don't, he, called don't, last, he called the last dude a liar. Now he tells <laughs> <talking> this dude, <laughs> you're a misogynist <laughs> jerk. Don't come up in here writing lies. <laughs> <laughs> come on, man. You know the deal. She was made a joke. Right. And you ran with that thing, man. Like like it was the Constitution. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Oh, boy, boy. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to end it on this. Uh, Brother Paint, I've got your mail order bright on the way, so please let your wife know. But Orlando, thank you for your letter. We really appreciate it. And if you want to get your emails and comments shared on the show, you can message us on our Facebook page or you can send us an email to itvp at intheblackpodcast.com.